Hello and welcome to this SSH introduction video. My name is Holger Wolf and I work for the Collect CMS team. Let's start by talking about what is SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell and is the program to securely connect to the command line interface of a remote machine. So what does secure mean? You might ask. First, the communication between you and the remote machine is encrypted so that no one can intercept, read or hijack your connection. Secondly, it automatically verifies that you are connecting to the server that you want to connect to and not some imposter server. With Linux and macOS, you get a text-based SSH client that you can just run from your terminal. As you can see, I need to tell SSH not only to the server that I want to connect to, but also my username. If I don't supply a username, it will by default try with my username on my local machine. The first time I connect, it will give me a warning that it can't establish whether the server is who it claims to be. If you continue with the connection, it will remember the server as a known host and from now on it will be able to verify, when you, it, to verify it when you connect. Next, you have to authenticate yourself to the server. The most obvious way to authenticate yourself is the password. Enter it and you're in. However, there is a more secure and more convenient way to connect using key pairs. Basically, a key pair is a set of two keys that, ge that get generated together. One is called the private key, the other is called the public key. The public key is for sharing far and wide. You don't care what, who gets it, they can't do anything sinister with it. The private key you keep private. Anyone who gets it will be able to impersonate you and so you want to make sure only you ever have access to it. They are related to one another in such a way that they can perform two very specific tasks. Someone can use the public key to encrypt a text in such a way that only someone with access to the private key can decrypt it. Note that the public key can only encrypt, not decrypt. The other task is to use the private key to create a so-called signature to a text, and the public key can verify the sig that the signature is valid. Since the signature depends on both the text and the private key, only someone with access to both can create it, but anyone with access to the text and the public key can see that the signature is correct. The second of these tasks can be used for authentication. If the server knows your public key, then when you attempt to log in, it can generate a challenge or random text and send it to you to sign with your private key. Since one can only do so with your private key, a successful signature means it's really you. So let's generate a key pair. With minus T, we specify which method should be used to generate the keys. ECDSA is a good system based on elliptic curves, but you might also use another system called RSA, though you should use at least 4096 bits with it. The minus B gives you a bit length. 521 is the strongest version of ECDSA. You will then be asked for a passphrase. Do not leave it empty. If you leave it empty, the private key will not be encrypted. If someone manages to get a virus into your system or hack your system, they can steal the file and pretend to be you on all servers that you have access to. If you want the convenience of not having to type your password every time, there is a better, safer way that we'll discuss later. This command has created two keys, idecdsa and id underscore edca.pub in your SSH directory. If you used RSA, the keys would have, called, would have been called idrsa and idrsa.pub. To use the keys, we need to tell the server that this is your key. To do this, we add, need to add the contents of idedcsa.pub. We need to add the contents of the public key on the server to the file authorized keys in, in the SSH subdirectory. The easiest way to do that is to use the program ssh-copy-id. This will, of course, ask for the password on the remote machine. If SSH copy ID is not available on your computer, you will have to do it manually. Open the file .ssh slash id underscore ecdsa.pub with any text editor and copy the contents. It's a single but very long line. Then log onto the remote server, create the directory .ssh if it doesn't exist yet. Make sure to include the dot at the beginning and then open or create the file authorized keys, American spelling, in that subdirectory. Paste the contents of your public key at, that, at the end of that file. Next time we try to log into the server, we will be asked not for the server password, but for the passphrase we used when generating the key. 
Since the secret part, your private key, never leaves your computer, this is the most secure authentication method and the only method a standard compliant SSH server must accept. But let's make SSH a lot more convenient to use with a configuration file. This configuration file needs to be in the directory.ssh in your on your computer and be called config. I create the file and add the first configuration. Now all I have to do is tap ssh my username at rygen. And ssh automatically knows which server I want to go to. Next, I want to get rid of having to type my username, so I open the config file again and add another line with my username. Now I only have to type SSH Raijin and it connects with the, with the correct username. But Raijin is not the only computer I want to connect to at Etsy, so I modify the config file some more. I add, this, I add another server and replace the host name with percent %h, which was resolved to the name that I, get, that I entered. Now I can connect to both Raijin and AccessDev. Of course, AccessDev doesn't know my key pair yet, so let's fix that. Fix that. Notice how SSH copy ID also takes the configuration from the, con from the config file. So far, we've limited ourselves to strictly command line programs. But what if we need a bit of graphics, a simple plot or some output? Linux's X X11 Windows system can display the graphical user interface of programs that, uh, that run on one computer on another, so we can roam in a program with graphics on Raijin and have, the dis and have it displayed on our machine, but we need two things for that. The first is an X11 server on our local machines. Linux has this as standard. With macOS, you might have to install uh, XQuartz, and for Windows, there's XMing. And secondly, we need X11 forwarding through the SSH connection. I leave the first part to yourself, as it depends on your machine. As for the second part, you can activate the X11 forwarding like this, either with capital X or with capital Y. The, min the ca minus capital Y makes the tunnel more trusting than the minus X, which might make it less, a bit less secure, but it also might be needed to get it to run in the first place. You can test whether X forwarding is active by starting a graphical program on the remote machine. Of course, these settings can also be added to the config file by adding forward x11 yes and forward x11 trusted yes. Now, I promised earlier that I would tell you how to, con how to have the convenience of passwordless logins to remote machines without the security implications of unencrypted private keys. The answer is an SSH agent. An SSH agent loads the private key into memory and decrypts it there, where it is much harder to steal than, than from a hard disk. Depending on your system, you might already have an SSH agent running. Try to run the command ssh-add. This will tell the agent to load the default key into memory. If it asks you to enter your SSH key pair for passphrase, just do that and you will no longer have to enter your password until you, reboot, until you reboot your computer. If you need to start an SSH agent first, the easiest way is to run this command. eval dollar open parenthesis ssh agent closing parenthesis then we can run SSH add. The problem is that this provides the, SS the agent only to its own child processors. So if you open another terminal, the agent will not be available. It would be better if the SSH agent was started at the first, as the first thing when you log in. The best method seems to be to add the, the evil dot open bracket SSH agent line to the dot profile script. If you want to automatically be asked for the ease pathways, if it isn't already in memory, add the line to the bash ASCII script, open parentheses, ssh-add minus L, redirection, slash dev slash null, closing parentheses, two vertical pipes, ssh-add. The lowercase L tries to list all loaded keys. We don't really care about it and redirect all output into Nirvana. But if no keys are loaded, then the command will have a non-zero return code. And if that 
happens, the two vertical pipes will call this the second part, the SSH add, to ask for the key per ask phrase. Finally, we can also forward the agent to the remote machine. Here's an example. Let's say I log into Access Dev. I don't need a password because it knows my keys and my agent automatically responded to the challenge. But if I log from Access Dev to Rajin, it will ask for my password because there is no key pair associated. Now, if I activate agent forwarding for the first connection with SSH minus capital A Access Dev, now then it works. I can directly log into Rajin because the agent on my local machine has responded to the challenge from Rajin to Access Dev. And as before, of course, there's an option for the config file, namely forward agent yes. This is all I want to talk about today. Um, if you have questions, then you can ask me or you can ask anyone else from the CMS team. Have a great day.